Yes, Karen. Hi. So I've been trying to um, figure out like a time blocking schedule for the week. And I was wondering if you had ideas for like a time block. Is it something you do every single day for the same amount of time? What do you want out of this for your business? Just keep it so it's like constantly going. So you're not up and down, you're doing good, and all of a sudden you have nobody. All right, so you want to build more, more consistency in your business, and you want the schedule to feel more routine than sporadic. Yeah, like I feel like I need to know, like, okay, at 11 o'clock I'm going to do this, at 12 I'm going to do this. All right, the reason why I asked you that, like, what do you want out of it? I know eight or nine years ago, I started doing the 5 a.m. call. People would be like, oh my gosh, do you think I should wake up at 5 a.m.? And I'd be like, uh, I don't know, Duh, should you? Like, what what would you want out of getting up early? Do you do your best work in the morning? Do you do your best work at night? And so you gotta know like, okay, if I'm gonna commit to something, what do I want out of it? What, what do I ultimately want this to do for my business and for my life? The time blocking schedule that I always recommend is basically how the accelerator program is set up. Over the years, our new agents have always had the best consistency in their schedule because they have something on their calendar that they're supposed to follow through on. They've made a commitment to themselves, to their business and to the team and it lives on their calendar every single day. And then we see that agents will go into experience or lead agents, and then they are like, oh, I have all this freedom. I can make the schedule whatever I want. And to your point, Karen, well, at that point, the agents that are like taking off, some of them will drop off their business because they then didn't carry that discipline over of a consistent schedule. So when I say the best time blocking approach to me in this business is set up like the accelerator, it's set up where in the morning you get done any training and prospecting that you need to do for the day. And then in the afternoon, you go on appointments. That's the simplest form. When we talk about the hours, it's gonna be different for everybody, okay? Let's take your calendar. When can you start work and when can you finish work? I drop my son off at school at eight and then at 2.30 I pick him up. So you can technically start your day at what, 8.30? Yeah. Okay. And then at two o'clock, you got to go and, and do pickup. Okay. So if I were you, 8.30 to 9, I would do cleaning up the day before. Is there an offer that needs to get a signature on? Is there a couple of phone calls at the end of the day that I miss? A couple of emails at the end of the day that I didn't respond to. 8.30 to 9 o'clock, I would do clean up. 9 o'clock to 9.30, I'd keep open for training like this. And then 9.30 to 11.30 would be prospecting. Prospecting is not, oh, I'm going to put showing time in for clients I'm already working with. That's not prospecting. Prospecting is generating new business, whether that's working the pond, working expired, working make me moved, whether that's working canceled, circle dialing for people that you're you know, working as buyers. That bundle of opportunity there is all the different activities of prospecting. So 9.30 to 11.30, just straight discipline on new conversations. 11.30 to 12.30, I do a working lunch, which includes all that showing time, setting up the showings, preparing for the showings that you have that afternoon, preparing for a listing appointment. And then for you, you gotta be done at two o'clock, 12.30 to two o'clock, I'd be out on those showings and those appointments. If you're done on days from two o'clock on, that's gonna restrict, obviously, your ability to get on more appointments because a lot of people have appointments after two o'clock. So you gotta hack in more of the weekend opportunities. And then I would put it into the calendar in perpetuity. If you look at my calendar, there's certain things that are just blocked off in perpetuity, right? This training is, is blocked off for me. The hot sheet's blocked off for me. All the, my open meeting time is blocked off for me. There's all these things that are just running in perpetuity. So they're now a habit. They're not a, what am I waking up and doing today? For those of you that don't, like Karen has a real obligation, you know, with her kids that is going to restrict the amount of time. For those of you that don't have a valid reason like that to have a restrictive schedule, I would implore you to fill up the schedule as much as you can because it only gets easier later on in your career. If you've got all day, like I had the luxury early on in my career, 12 to two, either a business lunch, a working lunch, prepping, and then from two till really seven, eight o'clock, I was out on appointments. And then weekends was a full slate of open house showings and 
you know, if there was any listing appointment opportunities. And that was my schedule seven days a week for those first couple of years to build the foundation. And, and that schedule's more of like, hey, I got really big ambitions. I'm talking a big game. I've got these big goals. Well, that's what putting your money where your mouth is. That's what that looks like. The way to not be on that roller coaster that Karen said, where you have a dip in business, the way to actually stay in this business is to make sure that it is your commitment, your religion to prospect every single day, new conversations. And I went through a whole bundle of ways you can do that. And then the other way is obviously building a network in the communities that you wanna be in. Do the top three or four or five attorneys know your name? That doesn't mean you have to have done a lot of deals yet. It means you have to find a way to make an impact to get yourself introduced to them, spend a little time with them so that you actually have them on speed dial. The contacts and the connections in this business are invaluable. Insurance people, finance people, whatever. People that are talking to a lot of people. Hairdressers, one of the best sources of referrals in my life was hairdressers. They talk to people all day. People trust the hairdressers more than their therapists sometimes. So at BMX, we listen to what real estate professionals want and need. That's why our platform is filled with sought after courses, content, and tactical assets for your business. And that's why we launched BMX in a box with templates and scripts done for you delivered each Friday. The best part, it's not coming from panel pontificators who bought their followers and don't sell any real estate. It's coming from top agents, team leaders, and content creators in the industry. It's education that actually shows you how to do what you need in today's market. And now it includes editable templates and scripts so you can easily deliver that knowledge to your database. Every day, we continue to add more content into BAMX, into our private Facebook community, content that works, content that our members have exclusive access to daily. Do not wait any longer. Use code Byron and join the thousands of agents taking their business to the next level today. Code Byron for 10% off. I'll see you in BAMX.